my question is for Anurag sir. How can we make it big into the industry like you? You can't, unless your surname is Kapoor. इसको जानता कौन है? फिल्म इंडस्ट्री का सबसे बड़ा फ्रॉड है। सर एक फिल्म की कहानी सुनानी सर आपको। सोनम कपूर लापता है। आपको उसे ढूंढना है सुबह सूरज उगने तक। इसमें जो भी होगा असली। आप उसे खोजोगे असली। आपको चोट लगेगी वो भी असली। आप रोगे तो वो भी असली। आप हंसोगे तो वो भी हंसी नहीं आएगी। तीन रूल। पहला रूल। आपको पुलिस को फोन नहीं करना। दूसरा रूल कोई आउटसाइडर को इन्वॉल्व नहीं करने का। तीसरा रूल ये कैमरा चलता रहेगा चाहे यमराज भी फिल्म में क्यों ना जाए। Are you in? चल, चल, चल बात। इसको कोई भी कभी भी कुछ भी कर सकता है सर। चल, कट, कट। क्या हो रहा है? फोन किधर है? Time नहीं आपके पास, दस घंटे। उसको बचा लो। इसे गिरफ्तार कीजिए और पूछे मेरी बेटी कहाँ है? मैं आपके हाथ जोड़ता हूँ, भीख मांगता हूँ। साला याला मंडता था एक्टिंग। क्या बात है? ये एक्टिंग नहीं है। नहीं सर एक्टिंग लगी नहीं रही है। सुपर इट इस। हेलो और वेलकम टू द बीएफआई होम इवेंट। आई एम डैनी बॉयल और टुनाइट आई एम जॉइंड बाय अनुराग कश्या � to talk about their new film, AK V versus AK. But first of all, I wanted to say my very first words ever to Vikramaditya Motwani. Um, <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> I hope I pronounced it correctly, Vikramaditya. Absolutely. I, I, I have never met you before and I've never spoken to you before. This is literally our first conversation. And those other two guys on the screen are titans, as I regard it, of cinema. Never mind where it is the cinema, just cinema around the world. But I didn't, I don't know you. I think I met you through your wife at one point, maybe when yes, we were doing Stomp Dog Millionaire. But the reason I wanted to, I didn't want to say anything in the preamble to you is I just wanted to convey to you what a wonderful film you've made. I well, was, thank you so much. I was astonished by it. I was absolutely blown. And I wrote to Anil about it. And I should have wrote to <laughs> Anil about it, but I didn't because I'm lazy and kind of, but it's, a, <laughs> it's an extraordinary film about, um, it's about many things it's about. It's, and it, for me, it, it joins, and we'll talk about this, it joins the pantheons of great films about filmmaking, of which there are a number. You know, my favourite ones are, and we can talk about my favourite ones, are Day for Night, Le Nuit Americain, Le Truffaut, and, and probably the, the, the Coppola, Coppola's wife's film about him making, uh, you know, Hearts of Darkness about him making the Netflix now, the greatest film ever made, the only film ever to deserve a Nobel Prize. Um, <laughs> Well, never mind all the other prizes. Um, and they'll, they'll, but this is an incredibly modern film about filmmaking, and there aren't that many of them. But we'll come on to that. Anyway, um, I just wanted to say that up front and centre before beginning this process. So thank you very much for a wonderful film. Anyway, um, what was, what, 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 there's a famous saying in, um, in, 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 in it, well, it's a film editor saying that there's only two things matter in movies the beginning and the end, and the beginning not so much. Um, and I've always loved that expression, but in fact, your film has a great beginning and a great ending. Unfortunately, we shouldn't discuss the ending, I don't think, <laughs> in any detail, because no. it will spoil it for people. So we must make sure you keep me off that, or you stay off it, or we get the BFI to edit it out afterwards. Because the pleasure I got from the film was partly to do with the way you deceived us about the whole movie. But anyway, um, let's talk about the beginning instead. And, in, and not just the literal beginning of the uh, movie narrative, but how you began the filmmaking process. How did this all begin between the three of you? So I, um, I, I got the, the, the writer is this gentleman called Aganash uh, Sampath. He lives in Amsterdam. He's a, he's a friend of mine. He works in advertising. 
Um, and he sent me this idea, you know, maybe about six or seven years ago. He's like, what if there's a story about this director who kidnaps the daughter of this movie star and then shoots the whole search in real time? And I was like, this is so cool. It's such a cool idea. Um, and he says, what if we do it as AK versus AK? You know, Anurag Kashyap being one of the, uh, the the director and, you know, we get an actor with, you know, with the AK name and we sort of like do that. And um, I said, this sounds, this sounds like amazing. And we put the script together. Uh, the beginning was something that wasn't there in the script. And I realized that as we're going along, when, if you don't know who the actors are, you need to set up a conflict. And that's why the whole sort of like, you know, the setup of the conflict of the, you know, between the two people at an event or, you know, somewhere else is that, that desire to sort of like do that. And I think we just got a little carried away with that, that specific scene. Um, I was very conscious of the fact that I needed to, I needed to have that scene for people who don't know who Anurag is or Anil is or, or the film industry to just come in cold, even if they're coming in cold, to be able to have a scene that sets it up um, in that sort of way and just like draws you in, in this really interesting fight between these two people, which is so frivolous at one level. It's about shoes, you know, it comes down to shoes. Um, <laughs> and, that, and that's the reason why the whole fight starts is because somebody said their shoes are better and somebody drops water on the shoes and it could be a misunderstanding, but it blows up and then this is what you have after that, you know, so... It, with, with all the fragile egos of the film industry, it's sort of like it, it made total sense, you know, for it to, for that kind of opening um, to be there and to have, you know, Anil and Anurag play versions of themselves, which is really interesting in the fact that they're both sort of playing that sort of hyper, hyper version of what we think they are um, in real life. So Anurag was attached to it from the very beginning. As he, as he says, I, I, I went on the set of Bombay Velvet, I held him from the back and I said, You're doing this film called AK versus AK. He had much, he didn't have much of a choice to say no. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so tell us about tell us and you're right. Tell us about your perspective in 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 starting it and getting getting to work on it. Because you also did the dialogues as well. I noticed from the credits. Yeah, I Vikram and but I I, I don't know like why I, I think you should have met Vikram sometime when you're here because. Both Kunal and Vikram started with my Vikram is the one who literally taught me sound design. So he were he and Kunal were part of like Panch and throughout the process. And Vikram was also the one who gave me my first still camera and taught, taught me how to take pictures and understand the camera. So he's been pretty much part of it. But this film was pretty tricky because I know that I can go any far I want while I was supposed to be doing dialogues with because but Vikram had to first find the other actor. And I had to, the idea was to, when the other actor is there, then they have to find something between us, which is real enough for the world to believe in. So any actor Vikram would find, I need to have a beef, old beef. And me Anil, and Anil have a massive old perceived beef. We have a beef, <laughs> which is perceived beef, which was literally sorted by Harshwardhan, you know, his son. His son being like, his son went after him saying that you you and Anurag need to sit and work together. And it's been going on for some time. So we decided that how people see that beef can really become something else. But the problem was I can go as any to any length trashing myself. I told Vikram that, you know, I will trash myself. I will say all kinds of shit. People want to believe the trolling that I go through politically, personally, everything. Based on my personal relationship, based based on my movie going, movies traveling to festival, but not working on box office, so I can go any far with myself. But the thing is, the other actor and him being an actor, and actors considered to be vain, and and self conscious about the image, how far will they allow me to go with them? Mm. So Vikram went through his own cycle, and it was in last year in October end. He came to me. He says, "We are doing this with Anil Kapoor." I'm like, oh my God, Anil Kapoor and me, we have a lot going. And he he and Avinash has sat down and worked it all out. And Vikram is so privy to my personal life and my professional life. Vikram wrote everything down. Everything. He didn't ask seek any permission from me. He didn't take any consent from me. So him and Avinash sat down and wrote everything they could about me. Fully trashing me. So I took the script. I said, okay, fine. I will make it worse than you think. But how far do I go with Anil? And Vikram said, listen, it's a first draft. Go all out. <laughs> do whatever you want to do with Anil. Say everything you want to say. At the most, he will say no. Or he will say, can we cut this down, please? But in the beginning, let's go all out. 
and he gave me 20 days <laughs> so like literally in 20 days i sat down and i wrote and i <laughs> literally trashed on him totally <laughs> and the funny part was and i gave it the gave the script to vikram and i was doing the jury at the singapore film festival so i did not want to face anil when he read the script i was like i don't want to be around when he read the script and vikram calls me and said we are on <laughs> he likes it i said he really likes it he said he is game i'm like oh my god and within two months we were on floors it's 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 interesting isn't it because it it's one of the shocking things about the film is um what it does what it does with people's reputations yeah. with their egos with the myths around them all of you <laughs> and, and lots of other people as well some of whom I, i recognize and some of whom i didn't but there's lots of other people get name checked as as well in there but yeah. the clue the clue is in is in anil isn't it in the first scene when he, when he's asked about being an actor and he says it's shameless it's absolutely shameless shamelessness is the key and and anil it presumably there's a degree of that in the way that you in the way that you approach this yeah you see uh danny when uh, you know uh, vikram came to me and he just gave the the first draft to me without the dialogues and and he just ran away he thought i'll throw the script on him <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but i read it i just you know loved it you know i just loved it and next day i called him and i said i'm doing your film and of course then it went to anurag and he wrote the dialogues and then anurag was worried that after i read the dialogue so vikram asked him to go all out then i read the dialogue you know they had we had one uh, narration where anurag came to my office to narrate to me i said this is fantastic this is terrific so they were both of them were looking at each other i said <laughs> i said we're on and uh, i was in london after that uh, that's the time i met you also i remember and uh, I, you know i started thinking about it came back to uh mumbai and i think october or november they approached me and i think jan i think sometime in jan we started shooting in february we finished the film in 21 days by 28th of february we were done with the film in 21 days we wrapped the film we did a few rehearsals for four five days and uh, just finished the film i just i just felt that this when the script came to me i said it's come at the right time i am you know uh, i think i should do this you know it's 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 exciting it's different it's something which i've never done and uh, something which no actor has ever done in india too so why not i should be the first one to do it and i just dumped, jumped into it and i just did it that's it I, i i i said to you when you when you sent it to me i i said to you in the reply that what's incredible is not only do you walk the plank as we said but yeah, the length of the plank that you actually walk out there <laughs> it, it, it appeared to me to be that you were ending your career literally ending your career and and simultaneously giving birth to a new one at the same time which is an extraordinary kind of juggling act which people but both people who are your fans but also people who maybe have not seen much of your work will well it's breathtaking really that you're prepared to, there's a truthfulness about it both in the satire what you're prepared to say about yourself but also in the emotion it throws up because it is an exhilarating film guys and a very and a very exciting one but it's a kind of obviously it's an idea and ideas can run out of steam as we know you know you get past the 50 minute mark and they begin to run out of steam but without that humanity behind it and i said at the beginning that only the the films you know only the beginning and the, and the end of a film are the things that really matter but actually that's not true in this case because there's an extraordinary scene the chase which culminates um with a car accident which i absolutely could not believe when i saw it <laughs> anyway i won't say anything about that people just watch it and enjoy it for themselves but it's followed by a scene which is so naked um where you you take on anil kapoor yourself <laughs> and accuse him of being a fucking failure um and it connects the yeah. what you're doing with your reputation as a as a film actor and your and and your own burden as a, a as a, a a father of a family and your responsibilities and it kind of leaves them for us all to look at in the way that we want actors to reveal themselves to us and you do i mean it's an incredible um sacrifice <laughs> no i you know this scene when i when when i first uh, 
uh, when Anurag did the narration of the all the scenes and all, I said, this is, these two, this is a, you know, monologue. I said, this is going to be a tough scene for me to do it. And, uh, and when I went, we did this exactly in front of the Grant Road fully, Apna railway station. And, uh, you know, it was a very, uh, matter of fact, uh, we had a lot of things packed. So I asked Vikram, I said, can we do the scene earlier and then do the chase later on that? Because we had hired the train and, you know, hiring a train in Mumbai and the railway station is a very, very uh, uh, logistically not a very easy thing to do and very expensive. So I said, Vikram said, have you have to finish that and then do the scene. And uh, I think that is the only night where somewhere I pulled my hamstring and I got injured. And for the first time in the entire, I think, scared that I really lost it. And I was so angry and I start, I shouted at the action director. I said, why are you, did you say cut? Or did you say, were oh, you giving instruction to the, uh, to the, uh, to the train, uh, to, the, uh, to the driver? Because usually what happens in India, there is no control over the, the voice pollution because everybody is shouting on the top of the voice. On the, they have the walkie talkie. I say, you have the walkie talkie. Why are you shouting? And you are so focusing and you're chasing someone. And he said, and I heard cut. I thought something gone on with the train. And I just stopped and I pulled my hamstring. Ooh. And I said, and fortunately for me, I had my physiotherapist at that time. And I said, I, I said, I can't. And I said, let me do try one more, but I just couldn't move. And he says, no, I think, uh, then Vikram said, I think we've, take, we've got the pieces so we can uh, move towards the scene. So we had almost done the entire chase. And then we started shooting the scene, I think roughly by 2, 2.30 in the night, I think. 2.33 in the night. So we did, they had done the accident side. And from there I did that scene. So the pain, the accident and my entire career, what I've gone through in my life <laughs> and all the emotions of me as a father, me, uh, you know, my entire, the journey and you know, it just came, everything came. And it was like a, like a, you know, kind of a, you know, reservoir, you know, you know, and I just burst out in that scene. I just, I just, you know, did two, three takes. And uh, I remember Anurag and Vikram, I've never seen Anurag and Vikram reacting to me the way they reacted, because I think it just, it because just he, came. There's some of the things came personally, they were not written. Yeah. So some of those personal elements came out in that scene from him which were not written in the script, which we were not privy of. And just emotionally just came out in that moment. It was like really mind blowing. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So and that's how much he got into it. I think. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know, I, I just said, I said, I said, just, I just want to let go, you know, of what I've gone through in my entire career, in my life, personally, professionally, all the humiliations, rejections, success, <laughs> failure, you know, everything, it was, you know, I just, let me just, you know, say it today, you know, in those, these lines. And uh, I just did it. And, uh, and I just, uh, you know, felt, you know, I said, then Vikram was happy, Arurag was happy. And so that's what it is. And, and of it course, just... my leg was absolutely fine after the shot. <laughs> <laughs> after I finished that shot. I said, I said, can we go back and do that? We can retake it. I asked Vikram. I said, can we go back? I said, no, no, we have left the train. We can't do that. Because I was ready to start running again <laughs> after doing that shot. It's a, it's a fantastic sequence. It's a wonderful sequence. And it's, it's rare with a sequence like that for it to, be, to culminate in such an emotional scene. That's a wonderful tribute to you all, I think. Vikram, I, I, I can't believe 21 days. That can't be true, is it? No, no, totally is actually it's less than that because we there was a there was a there was a chase sequence we shot a fairly complex chase sequence from you know when they're right at the end when they're going from Anurag's house to the to the mill where we were doing this like chase where we had a pod on the top and we did that kind of stuff and you know the thing in Bombay is you can't shoot anything action oriented unless it's like between one and four in the morning because that's the only time so about three or four days and I eventually cut that chase out because it wasn't necessary but no but it was true because Anil. Uh, um, we did, we rehearsed, we rehearsed a lot of the stuff, um, you know, Anil and Anurag was so ready to shoot that literally every day we were shooting six to eight pages of dialogue, um, a day. Um, and I was doing it, I was doing all of it in like a single shot or we were stitching things together, yeah. you know, and it was, uh, that was the way we we're doing it. And because these guys were on fire, oh, it was, it was we were like so three shots a day. Thing. 
three shots a day. Yeah, we do like well, three shots a day. What's wonderful about that one camera approach? Obviously, it is. You know, when you when you're not doing the reverse, it, it is the only real way you can save time. If you've got stylistically a way that benefits it when you're not turning because we know what it is with film it's always turning everything round to face the other way it takes all the time but the momentum you get from this is so exciting which it's very thrilling the cat and mouse of it but the sheer physical momentum of the film is is fantastic and the cutting your editors done a, a fantastic job but but i wanted also to talk about the crowd i mean how many of those people were actually extras that you'd <laughs> hired or how many did you bump into? Because there's some extraordinary scenes going on with, I mean, like, I mean, the, the, the scene where Anil eventually goes back and performs for the crowd after the emotional scene is itself. You think, who are these people? Have they been hired? Or are they just hanging out to see Anil Kapoor? They're hanging out to see Anil. They're, they're, they're a mix. We got, some, we got some extras on set, but... Anil literally, and this is Anil, right? He goes on the, the, the first day, he goes he goes up on the stage. And he literally, we're in Dharavi, you shot in Dharavi, you know what it's like. And he literally goes on stage at night and, and uh, just calls everybody and says, just come for the shoot. So everybody lands up for the shoot. And the good thing <laughs> is, this is this is a film where you don't have to worry about people looking in the camera. They can look in the camera. It doesn't matter, right? So yeah, nobody... Yeah. Might but the scene was like, actually made by the real crowd. Yeah. Hey, it totally was. It totally was. There's a... It's wonderful. And also, I mean, I should, uh, we've got such a lot to cover. The other thing that's weird about that crowd scene is there's Anurag at the front of it, like a kind of avenging angel. And it's, there's a kind of, when I watched it for the second time, it was much creepier. And Anurag, you were much creepier. I was so impressed by your acting the first time because I thought oh, that was it was, it was, I was just literally got taken in by Anil. So I was not at all acting. <laughs> What happened was Vikram got a take. Vikram got a take and he said, okay. And somehow Anil said, no, I want to do one more. I can do better. And he just came back. And we were doing that. And for me, in my head also, I was like, you know, it's done. Why does he want to do one more? Because going through the crowd, the first time the crowd did not let him get up, get up on stage. So everybody had taken out their cell phones. Everybody was recording him. Everybody wanted selfies. Then Anil went and spoke to them. Let me go up on stage. But after the scene was done... Anil wanted one more take. And that was the last take that is kept. And he went up on stage and he performed with such energy that I had not seen. It was almost, it was almost like saying a big, like, this is what you want, take it in your face. Like he's throwing it in their faces. He's throwing it in their faces with so much anger. He's out of sync. He's not doing the choreography right. It is just so much <laughs> anger that he's throwing at them and frustration. And I was just watching him. Literally, I became a director in that moment. And I was not an actor in the scene. And I was literally just watching him do that. And by the time the sh shot got over and Anil ran away, somebody came and told me, the camera has moved away. You're still sitting here. And then I ran after it. <laughs> so that's how it happened, actually. But it's 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 interesting, isn't it? Because you, you are, when I watched it a second time, you are like an avenging angel. And the puzzle is obviously for Anil. And then, yeah. and then there's a moment in the film where the film becomes a puzzle for the actor and the director, whereas the director's meant to be in charge. And yeah. I wondered what you all felt about, is filmmaking a puzzle like that? Do you ever know what you're really gonna get you. at the end of it? Because if we all knew what we were really gonna get, there'd never be any failures, would there? Because why would and you- It would be boring, it would be very boring. <laughs> It would be like executing something that you already know. It's like, you know, yeah. the, the idea is in like going with the process and not knowing where it's going and how it's going to turn out. And somehow that was happening in the sense that whole sequence that what Vikram and Avinash, the writer, they had written into the script, which I thought was genius, was like my uh, me feeling like I'm in control of what's happening. I suddenly realized it's not in my control and I don't know what is going on. It's totally getting out of my control. And that twist around in the film and not knowing where it's heading and Anil is confused and I'm confused and then the character, the director starts looking at the girl and every, everything, like, you know, those, those are the things that that really, I think, were genius. Well, I think in, in our head, there was there was this whole thing of like, you know, you're, you're having a lot of fun with this film sort of like till that point, right? You're seeing Anil gets, and as you said, like you're, he's getting stripped naked, you know, he's been through this crazy chase 
and he's gone and you know like he's 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 bared his soul and then he has to go on stage and he's bearing his soul all over again and they're like no dance and he's like okay fuck it i'm going to dance and 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 he does all that um and then you know you find it like okay so you had you've had fun to that point right because you're watching it from from as you're saying from anurag's you know the avenging angel point of view you're basically you're having a lot of fun watching anul go through the grind you're dragging him through the mud and you're enjoying seeing him drag through the mud and then suddenly there's a twist where it's just like in my head is like if i can get the audience at this point in time to just just suddenly you're like okay we we care about these people and we're actually in this movie and there is a real plot because you suddenly get it's not about like hey anurag is doing the plot and i'm watching i'm having fun watching him you know put anul through the grinder it's like hang on a second something is you know something is something's really gone wrong here uh, and that was a deliberate you know intention was to just pull the audience like really deep in at that point in time and say okay it's not just about having fun now let's like let's let's uh there is a go with this somewhere yeah? there's a lot of fun because it, <clears throat> there's a lot of fun in the film the 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 satire because like great satire scenes should be totally ridiculous and yet totally believable at the same time and the police station is an example of that when i saw <laughs> when i saw neil just the way you walk into the police station i recognized it it was like a flashback i knew that police station and i knew that movie star moving in and i thought this is going to be a fantastic scene and it was and the use of selfies and it's it's and you use every trick in the book as you should to kind of satirize modern media and modern filmmaking the modern film industry i think that's one of the huge benefits of it other than its emotional journey is obviously what it throws up about the ridiculous world we 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 participate we willingly part- we willingly participate and contribute to <laughs> we're all idiots um which, which 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 leads me to say and especially given up where the film ends do you think we do you think you have to be insane to be a filmmaker <laughs> we, <laughs> a bit, uh, yeah no no you have to you have to be you have to be insane you have to be super you have to be driven people are just you know i mean i i i we've all seen it our entire life where everybody's like what is it with you guys and what is it with this you know this this especially in india and, yeah especially in india because you know everything's like so you know passion is not something that is that ha- valued that, here yeah we've not grown up with it it's like you just you know so if you're passionate about something you're like you're crazy because then you're chasing the arts or you're chasing sports or whatever and today of course it's like you know people see that it's a uh, you know it's it's accepted and 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 it's encouraged but i see with you know i see with kids all the time it's like you know i have i mean just my nephews for example and and you know where i've seen it in la for example they grow up where this kid was shark obsessed and uh, that's encouraged you know what i mean like he's crazy about sharks at the age of 8 and the age of 10 and it's actually encouraged and like i know the same thing in india would be like okay get over it he'll get over it it's it's a phase you know what i mean um i used to get that a lot when i was like 20 21 and you know an assistant director and you know my grandmom would be like oh, so when's the hobby getting on like a hobby i'm working 16 hours a day is not a hobby So you sort of question yourself as well as like oh okay, yeah am i being a bit crazy are we doing this kind of stuff but um yeah we all are i think uh, i mean i'm very happy for it. yeah is it's difficult <laughs> also because you know everybody here gets offended very easily when we're making movies we're doing anything yeah. on a daily basis we have people who get offended with everything and people there's serious lack of either sense of humor or lack of self worth or i don't know what it is is very hard which is why also making this film was so difficult till we met anil because anil in last i think 10 12 years has been in that phase where there are very few people like him who can laugh at himself so and and here it is see and like you know when the trailer came out and when the promotion started i got lots of letters and trolling happening to me saying that how can you disrespect anil kapoor like that do you even know who he is and he has had a 40 year career and how dare you do that and you deserve no place and telling anil that you should never be in touch with this guy you should discard shit like these people and who are disrespecting you publicly so that's how it is so it's very hard sometimes it's it's what's extraordinary anil is that you both you but you laugh at yourself but you also you you dignify um the 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 process of of acting as well 
simultaneously. That's the kind of great balancing that you do. But you also, because it's an action film, I mean, it's funny, I don't know how it'll go down, um, because it, it's an action film about filmmaking, which I don't know whether many people are interested in it, but more than that, it's an action film about family, for both of you, actually, for both the actors in the film, but especially for you, Anil, with the Harsh, <laughs> who is very, very funny in the film, your son, he's hilarious in the film, and also does a very crucial moment in the film as well, um, beyond that. But also it's based around your daughter, who herself is a big star in, in Bollywood as well. And obviously you, you allow the family and, and, and the wider family to be a, a, a personas in the film as well, because you can't make a film about filmmaking in India without showing the families, because I know from myself, from my own experience there, it's such a big part of it. And I remember you telling me, Anil, that normally what happens um, in India is that if a director wants to make a film, you go to the movie star's house and act out yeah. the film in front of the movie star and his family and with all the falls and the jokes and the kind of, you, you just act it out in front of them, which of course Harsh does at one point, which is in it as well. So for me, it kind of, having spent such a wonderful time there, it just resonated so much about, um, about, about that, that world. And it's, it's, so tell us about your family's involvement. Were they, were they game? As Anil, were they happy to be involved with you on it? You know, Danny, as a first time when, when Vikram came to me, I said, I am not going to speak to them. You see, you have met everyone. You know, everybody's so independent and everybody's got a mind, you know, in my family. So I, I said, if I'm not one of those patriarch kind of fathers who's going to tell you, you have to do this, you have to do this. For my sake, <laughs> I'm not that kind of person. I said, Vikram, please, you go and chat with them. So Vikram, <laughs> Vikram and uh, obviously Harsh is, you know, obviously uh, obsessed with Anurag, Vikram. So whatever Anurag and Vikram do, he has to do it. You know, you, you know Harsh how he is. <laughs> so uh, Harsh was game as, as you know, he's, and, uh, and uh, then of course I was very surprised that even Sonam and Anand, you know, Sonam is not only my daughter now, she is, you know, someone's wife, someone's daughter-in-law. And I said, I can't take a decision. And I think uh, Vikram met her in uh, New York. And I think somewhere, I think it's the respect for the filmmaker, uh, you know, and me, uh, our family being a film family, they know who's, what the intent of the filmmaker is, how genuine the filmmaker is. So somewhere when they come to know this filmmaker is, you know, what the, his past film, the kind of work he has done, his reputation, and then, of course, there is an emotion that my father is doing the film. If it was someone else, obviously, they wouldn't have taken, you know, you know, done these kind of, you know, at least Sonam, Harsh, okay, fine, he's starting his career. But Sonam, for her to do it, and uh, so I think somewhere it's, uh, they even Vikram and Sonam have a certain kind of relationship because uh, they both, uh, when Sonam was an intern at Sanjay Lil Bansali, uh, Vikram was uh, assisting uh, Bansali. So they have a certain kind of friendship. So uh, Harsh, so Harsh and Sonam obviously was more a combination of Vikram and me, and of course Anurag, and of course we went to the uh, Sunita. Obviously said, asked us to just get out because you know I said I was getting scared to ask Sunita. <laughs> then Vikram, I said at least give give your voice. So Sunita refused. Uh, Sunita refused, and Ria obviously, uh, you know, uh, then I think he tried to get in touch with Ria also. So both those members said I no. Think, I think me and Vikram have got unconditional love from Anil and his family. So, <laughs> get mm. <laughs> so uh, but they, I was quite pleasantly surprised that they all uh, became part of the film. And, and of course, then my brother, Boni, also, he also became part of it. And uh, the most funny part was that Boni didn't know what the film was all about. So he kept on asking Vikram. I said, what is this? This? What is this? Is it real? Is it fiction? What is it? So you were completely confused of what Vikram was trying to make. Then he realized that everybody's doing the film. I said, look, everyone's doing it when I'm doing the film. So he came into the film that day. I think there's one, so, one, of, the, one of the best lines in the movie is, is in the family scene where um, I think he says, um, all these rehearsals on your rag and you still don't have a hit. <laughs> that, is, that was improvised. That was, was improvised. It, was it? That was, impro that was that improvised was because Bo Bo Boni in every take would say different things. He's known me for so long and he keeps advising me on how to make a successful film and why do you have to be political and why do you have to be so esoteric and why do why can't you just like you know be out there for everyone understands you? 
So he's always been doing that and, and with very good hearted. He's been for the last 20 years. He was the first producer who came to me and said, we, you need to buy a big house and you need to be, do a big film company. Let me do it. And I have never done that. So it comes naturally from him. That's how he makes fun of me. One day he was saying, so how have you come? Walking or on a rickshaw? So he said, it sees me like that. And it really? was very hard to tell him that, you know, you have to do the same thing in every take. Because every take, you would do different things. Wow. It's fantastic. Can I... But you know, Harsh, not because you see, I, Vikram, obviously, you know, uh, somewhere has, you know, kind of a uh, uh, relationship with uh, Harsh. So me and Anurag, when, uh, you know, when Harsh was doing this, all my reactions were, you know, I said, will you be able to do it? Will you be able to do it? And it was a long... Six, seven minute monologue. Monologue, yeah. And, yeah. yeah. And uh, so, you know, and uh, so once he did it, I said, there was a relief. So these were the stressful days for me, working with Harsh. I said, <laughs> <laughs> so not the family. But Boni was very stressful. Yeah. Oh, you, know, you, you, you have plenty of competition, Anil, including, including the guy in the back of your car who says, you think you're the only actor in India. <laughs> this is another one of the great lines. You have lots of competition throughout, throughout the film. That is so funny, yeah. But can I, can, can I, well, I, we have to draw this to a conclusion, I see, but, but can I talk about one other thing, which is behind the camera? Because of course, I'm looking at us and it's four blokes talking to each other and it is a very, very enjoyable film about these two actors, two extraordinary figures. <clears throat> but there's a, there's a woman behind the camera and it is, as yes. we said earlier, one camera and she's called yes. Yogita and, and she plays an extraordinary part in the film, although you hardly see her. In fact, she gets assaulted at one point, which again, you barely see. You don't see it. And yet I wonder whether it's so funny because it, you sense her perspective sometimes. And when the conclusion of the film comes, you go, oh, it, it kind of shifts you around. You go, oh my God, oh my God, of course. And I wonder whether it's that, I wonder whether it's that female gaze that you sense. And I know it's your gaze, Vikram, but it, I wonder whether the female gaze plays into it as well. Looking at these crazy guys trying to protect their world, trying to, their careers, you know? I wonder whether it's that as well. It is. I was, it is. It is. It is that. I was trying to. I was trying to. You know, like I kept telling myself, it's like, what would, what would a, a first-time student filmmaker do? You know, in this moment, it's like you know, part of it is like, okay, it's not you directing it. Like, so my, my bits is me as a director. I have to get. I have to have my stamp in the beginning and the ending because that's the way I would do it. But in the middle of it, it's like, it's this first-time filmmaker. It's you know, it, it is as you're saying. It's the female gaze. It's the young gaze. It's actually looking at these two. Dinosaurs is too strong a word, but <laughs> part, of the, part of the idea of I, 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 why why the film works, in, you know, with Anil and Anurag specifically, is so when you look at it from each person's point of view, of the accusations that are thrown across. So Anurag saying Anil, you're over the hill, and Anurag, Anil saying Anurag, you're over the hill. They both have something to prove, right, to each other in that moment, and Yogita is sort of like to yourselves, yeah. And Yogita's dispassionate sort of like observation of this, and sort of like saying, "I'm going to make a really good movie out of this." Is what kind of like you know you know it is that it's that gaze and it's that that's what drives um, you know the the narrative kind of like uh, forward yeah so and that was really really liberating you know just to be able to you know, as a director to be able to also just go you know you're behind the camera doing this but I'm being able to see everything live in six to seven minutes and eight minutes and you can pretty much tell if the scene's working or not if the edits working or not if the pacing's working or not but also to have this sort of dispassionate you know, very, very, very objective approach uh, uh, to this because you're trying to see it through somebody else's eyes, you know, through a 21-year-old girl's eyes. Yes. Which is, yeah, it's kind of interesting. It's, it's it, like I was, I was asking you earlier, do you have to be insane to make a film? I, w I was shocked, Neil, when I watched the film again. I mean, the film is huge fun and very exhilarating and a wonderful idea. But there is, there is a, there is, it isn't a successful murder at the end of it, but there is murder there as well. <laughs> it isn't quite, it, it doesn't quite complete, though it's actually more delicious than murder in the end. But that gun, when it appears, 
it kind of it appears earlier in a postman always rings twice kind of way earlier on and then it and then there's a gun a second gun that appears that's hugely significant but it's also do you have to be i mean is the murder in our eyes as creators all of us to a degree that you have to be prepared <laughs> Hey, is making a film to get your way. Do you have to be prepared to almost murder people to get your way? That's for Anil. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, I think um, you know, uh, not. But I think I think all of us can go to any extent to make a film. Uh, uh, being from a film family, and uh, you know, being as you know, from the time I've come into my senses. Uh, you know, you know. Uh, of course, you don't have to murder, <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, you go to any extent to make a film. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I just somewhere it is, and, yeah, and sometimes, sometimes you know, you're doing something that everybody else is not doing, or the market forces where you know, film is looked upon only as a business and nothing more than that. It's like in outside when you're make, going to a studio and trying to pitch a film that everybody is like. You can make this, then why you when you can make A, why are you making B? But you want to make B. And and then then it's almost like murder. It's like you don't do anything to just get this done. Yeah, yeah. It it's 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 extraordinary. It's been obviously for everyone um watching this and, and for all of us, it's been an extraordinary year 2020 around the world, with very, very little to cheer about. And I just want—I just wanted to finish with you, Anil, and and just just talk about why you wanted to make the film, and 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 in, in this particular year, really, because it's there's very very little to celebrate about the year. Obviously, there are vaccines arriving now, which is a scientific. You know, you think we've responded. You know, our scientific responded has responded to it. There hasn't been much artistic response to 2020 at all, really, because there hasn't been time yet. So it's wonderful to see a film. That is, that is really honest and entertaining and celebratory, but also quite chilling at times as well. Like I said, there's a, when you realize afterwards there's a potential, there was a potential moment of murder in there. But uh, I, so I just wanted to hand over to you, Anil, and ask about why you, yeah, to just to, to, where we began really, why you wanted to make the film. I think, <clears throat> first of all, it came, uh, some, in, it was offered to me in 2019. And we finished the film exactly 20 days before the lockdown. The post-production was done during the lockdown. And I think it came to me at the time of my, it came at the right time for me. I just felt that I have to do the film. I wanted to work with Vikram, most important. I wanted to work with Anurag. I wanted to, you know, there is a certain kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, perception in the industry that there's something wrong in our relationship between me and Anurag. And, uh, you know, so that also I wanted to prove everybody wrong, and uh, and of course uh, Harsh, uh, you know, has been uh, you know uh, a kind of a son to me, or you know, not a friend who has always encouraged me to do. You know, you know, sometimes you listen to your uh, children and you learn more rather than uh, you tell children what they should do. So somewhere I think he's the kind of a person who's really I'm being very honest who has really helped me come close to all the, the filmmakers I really, where he has connected and I also wanted to connect, but it came very yes. organic. So he's it's been a binder key. between all of us. Yeah, he's the kind of been a, a binder between all of us. All of us, yeah. And Harsh has been a kind of a, a binder, yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, I'm being very honest today to, you know, tell you that I am uh, not because he's, uh, you know, he's Harsh Vardhan, he's a friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but uh, it's and I, it came at the right time. I wanted to work with them. The script was terrific, and uh, I said this is the right time for me to do it. Nobody's ever done it, and uh, everything fell in place. I think somewhere the universe was helping us. Uh, you know, sometimes you do make a film, you know, you and everything just falls in place. Yeah, this film also everything just fell in place. Uh, Danny, just fell in place. It, it's you know, everything, like for example, we wrapped the film on twenty eighth Feb. And after a few days, we had a rap, uh, rap party in the 2nd March, 14th or 15th. There was, and we were shooting in Dharavi, in Dharavi with thousands of people. I was shooting in all the locations where there were hundreds and 200 people and everybody's touching me, pulling me. And after 15 days, there was social distancing. And we finished the film. So 
somewhere the universe wanted that the film should be made at the right time yeah. and it has to come in 2020 and it's releasing on my birthday it's which is you know it released on my birthday so <laughs> this is going to come late for 24 december so i i don't know it's 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 you know absolutely in you know how what do i say it uh it's magical i think the whole thing and i've come to the entire uh, vikram's family i've come to know arak's family i've come closer to both of them and i feel they're part of my family and uh, and i feel we're going to do really good work in the future also you know all of us and i would, uh, I, i i i just feel it's been very enriching very educative and um, i'm very happy to be part of this journey with vikram and anurag I was I was I was shocked when the film ended and I saw the credits I couldn't believe that there were other people involved <laughs> literally you have such an intense experience with the two of you and obviously all the and the events that happen into it and I suddenly you know and because it's shot in that one camera style until the three cameras arrive which is a hugely significant moment where everything and again that's about filmmaking it's it's sort of like the shift in filmmaking to multiple coverage you're suddenly thrown like what's going on here <clears throat> but it felt like i was like i i was shocked at how i was taken in by the film into believing <laughs> i watched this real time event if you like which is sort of you know it's like the tiktok song it sort of feels like a a ticking clock taking you down there so it's a wonderful tribute to you all and um and and you should you should you should finish vikram um i i'd like i'd like to finish by wishing um anil a happy birthday in a few days time but you should finish vikram as the filmmaker and tell us really does it does it resolve the question that the two gentlemen set at the beginning of the film about who is more important when they're asked by the audience the director or the actor <laughs> <laughs> well it 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 models it a bit more right because really at the end of it who is the director anymore who is the actor anymore it's just like everything is just uh, it's it's another big question it's like yes it's like what lens will you go to to get what you want anurag is said you know is is proving that through the through the film and anil is also doing that you know to the film at the end of the day it's like i can do everything um but there's something in what danny said it just suddenly made me realize in the end anil proves that film is is the director's medium but he is the director <laughs> somebody else who is, is the director, is the director? I'm I'm like, who, yeah. you know who becomes the actor and who becomes the director you don't know you don't know <laughs> it's, it's it's an eternal question amongst us i think the women may have a may have, women eventually may have a big say in resolving yes. it when they take eventually over. they're directing Yeah, we take over a bit more. Okay, so thank you very much for your film and your time this evening and thank you all so much for watching at home. You can watch AK versus AK on Netflix now. If you enjoyed this event, please consider donating to the BFI. They are a charity and their venues are currently closed in Britain, so your support your support helps keep them going. Thanks to the three participants, thanks to Vikram, thanks to Anu Rag and thanks most of all to Anil who must be up late ready to shoot in the morning i imagine and it's been a wonderful pleasure to get together with you guys to meet you Vikram for the first time and to renew acquaintance with the with the other guys thanks very much guys for thank a wonderful you, thank film. you so much people enjoy it thank you so much Danny thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you Danny